What's up, you sexy nerds? I am Wildfire One. You're watching and listening to Nerd is the New Sexy Entertainment, the podcast. With me today is... Laser Kid. Good old Laser Kid. You know him from such podcasts as the He-Man uh, Season 1 podcast. <laughs> and, oh, and the, <laughs> which we have, I think, oh man. And then I the am, Thundercats. I am of, oh yeah, Thundercats. That was a good one. I actually referenced that on the Toonami Faithful podcast mm-hmm. recently. And then before that, you'd know him probably on like our second episode ever, which we talked about. Mega Man. Still I don't is. know. I don't know if you guys know what we're talking about. I don't know if you know what we're talking mm. about this this mm. podcast. Um, it's a mystery. You know, it's it's a mystery, and I might not be afraid of it. Yeah, I, we're totally talking about Ghostbusters Afterlife. And um, as it was said in Ghostbusters 2... Well, better late than never. I know a lot of other people have done reviews. A lot of other, And I've been meaning to. I wanted to go out and see it dressed up the first night. But my paycheck said nope. <laughs> I remember I went to go see it before I went home for Thanksgiving and Christmas. And I was I, like, Wild, you have to see this thing. I, I didn't even get to see it in theaters. Like I, wa- I just watched it digitally online um, recently. I, had to, I, I, I swear to God I paid money for it. I'm not going to screw... I watched it and oh my god, man! Like there was a little worry because I, I I was very excited since the first like teaser where they just showed the Ecto One in the in in the uh, the barn or whatnot the little the little shed and right. then, and it like and that was it that was just they're going oh there's gonna be another like, Ghostbusters movie there's an Ecto One yeah well they're at, I guess they're ahead of. Some so, other movies? Uh, which I'm going to try not to sit and shit on this whole episode. I don't want to just be like, Ah, Ghostbusters 2016! Why? Because I've done it so much. I've done that so much already. Like, even though, what is it? What's his name? Paul Feig or the fuck is... Paul fuck that, Feiger, fuck that yeah. guy and everything well, he stands for. That guy has got the weirdest butt hurt for this movie. And it's like, well, make a good movie and he, people like it. On Christmas. Christmas Day. He tweeted, oh. That's kind of sad, actually. But he tweeted something along the lines of like, oh, oh, Sony must have made a mistake because our movie is, the 2016 Ghostbusters isn't going to be involved with the, the, the triple, like the triple feature version of like all three of the movies. Well, it, it specifically distanced itself from the other movies. Why would you want it with him? He specifically went out of his way to make it so those movies didn't exist. Why are you going to be like, oh, God, oh, you're not going to sell our movie with a better franchise? How are you surprised, Paul Fig? Well, it's like, it'd be like, it's like the cool kid going, I don't want to be with the nerds over there, but the nerds are going to the theater. I want to go to the theater. Why won't the nerds let me go? Why won't they invite me? To them. Because you, you took yourself out of the equation. You don't deserve to be with the, with, with the original Ghostbusters. You don't. And it has no, nothing. You, and it has nothing to do with the cast being female. It has everything to no. do with the movie being shitty. The the primary cast of Afterlife is also female, but it's a good movie. Yes, and it's well written. And most of all, it's a continuation, which is what we were begging you to do, Fig. Not a fucking remake, but a really weird, unnecessary remake of one of the best movies of all time. <sighs> yeah, it was. It was. That, there's my rant. I'm gonna. I'm gonna uh, I, I, we've got it out of the way. I'm gonna try and keep it to that. I'm sorry, man. No, it's not your fault. I knew this was coming. I knew it was gonna happen. <laughs> One of the things that I hear, and I can't necessarily argue for for Afterlife to switch over slightly, is that it's not as funny, and it's not as raucously funny as the others. But it has comedy that is funny. Well, Afterlife. I think you and I discussed this. Afterlife is more of like a drama, dramedy. Mm-hmm. It's it's I like agree. comedy with drama. There's there was points in it that made me laugh. I laughed more in Afterlife than I ever did in 2016 Ghostbusters. Uh, same, definitely the same. If you if, uh, again, message Paul Feig. If you're gonna compare the two, <laughs> guess what? Sorry to tell you, 2016 Ghostbusters, not even in the same fucking book. It's a completely different kind of movie. Yeah, it is. And so we'll get right to the topic. Ghostbusters Afterlife. I watched it. You watched it. Uh, we're probably not going to go too far into spoilers other than maybe a few things that I know I called from At that very first... point, if you're watching a Ghostbusters Afterlife video, this has been well after... It's not even in theaters anymore. I'm not too worried about the spoilers. Yeah, true, but I, it's still, like, I'm going to say for people who hasn't seen it. Yeah, you know. we, don't, we don't need to go... Uh, 
Dumbledore died. <laughs> <laughs> Frodo fucks Samwise. But I um, think you may have just given fandom an aneurysm. Oh yeah, yeah. Fucking Ghostbusters Afterlife. Like I said, is amazing. Okay, like, like I said, I'm not gonna try and get into like scene by scene when I when I say spoilers. There's so much going on there. Uh, I will honestly, say this: go see it. <laughs> it was it was to to give it kind of a it's a love letter to Harold Ramis. The original film was preserved, like all that mm-hmm. was preserved. Oh, God, yeah. Those of you who know me have heard me talk about Ghostbusters the video game, and how uh, Bill Murray kind of phoned in his acting on that one. Like it was really it was, the way I explained it yeah. was it was Bill Murray pretending to be pretending pretending to be Peter Venkman pretending to be Bill Bill Murray. It just felt bad. Um. Yeah, but in, in he was definitely this, not as in on that. But in this, I, I I looked at the character and I was like, "That's Bill. That's not Bill Murray. That is Peter Venkman." That's Peter Venkman. I agree. Um, the the scene this scene it was in, well, scenes. Yeah, he was him. That was um, that was Peter Venkman, hundred percent best. The and I was everything. so happy to see it because same reason. Uh, I love that game. It's a good game. Yeah, but the the his performance his performance is, was lacking. Right. And I don't think it's it was not horrible, but it's not what it could have been. Well, I don't think it was because I at that time him and Ramus uh, were having kind of kind of like they were butting heads on a lot of things. In fact, uh, in fact, Bill Murray wouldn't even go to the studio when everyone else was recording their voice their voices. So they more or less recorded Bill by himself from from what I read and heard. Uh. And it's not, you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. It was just we were happy to have him do it, and I'm sure they were yeah, happy to have absolutely. him. Absolutely, it's it's better than not having him. Yeah. So um, that was cool, and I and I get also understand the the idea of like not wanting to be seen as one character, but also he, like I mean he's not though. He has a whole no. Career. He has he has a whole career of it, but I I I think there was more to it that we don't know. I, I really think there was a, there was some. There was, there was bad there. blood between him and Ramis at one point. And and I think Harold Ramis passing is probably what changed it. Well, I read something about, um, I guess, a, not a week, a certain amount of time before Harold passed. I uh, did hear that now that you mentioned yes, it. Yes. Before Harold passed, uh, Murray came over and, like, made they made up. And that's good. I'm glad that happened before it was too late. Because a lot of the times that's what happens. I, I, I really want to skip ahead, but I'm not going to because there's part, especially now we're talking. Cause, yeah. Um, so, okay, we'll start off the movie. It's basically your average dysfunctional family, and they're the Spanglers. They're, they're, um, they are? They're, they're Egon's daughter and grandchildren. The kids look just like him. I don't give a fuck. Do. Especially oh the little God. boy looks just like the animated series Egon. And, like, I, they did a damn good job. A really fun movie, and I think. The big thing for me is that it has... It's wearing its heart on its sleeve. Yes. Um, well, it's obvious that they put a lot of thought into it and a lot of like love to Harold Ramis. And before we go any further, I will say this. I was right. I'm going to say it. I was right. And I'm glad they did it. I'm glad I was right. Harold Ramis does appear as a ghost in the show. In the oh, movie. yeah. And I, I ever since the very first... When I talked about the very first uh, uh, trailer, that's one of the things I said. Please, please put him in, put him in, make him a ghost. Do it like, do it like an homage to him. And I'm so fucking glad. I'm so glad. I love how they didn't just stop there, though. No, they didn't. They, they. I went, love oh. that Egon as a ghost was a character throughout the whole. Movie. And they kept his hair. They kept the they Egon kept, hair too. It was so they cool. They keep the Egon hair. But I mean, even when you don't see him. He's yep. doing a lot. Yes, Egon's actions in this movie are all. He's a thinker. Over the place. Egon was always a thinker, and he was the thought. He was the he was the the brains behind the Ghostbusters. He's even said it. You have his grandchildren, and they're all a little different. You know, the, the older boy is a typical older boy, but the granddaughter, the the uh, oh a Phoebe, a Phoebe is a fucking oh, genius, she's just like him. She is. What I love about her is that she's a genius. In theory. <laughs> Well, she's all, she's also what twelve, exactly. But I, they 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 don't do the thing where it's like she's immediately perfect yeah, and everything. Yeah. Um, she's really interesting. She has a strong aptitude. The the characters likable. Too, oh, she's incredible. She's likeable. very likable. Like all the characters in this movie, are likable. Yep. 100%. Even the ones that aren't supposed to be likable, like they're, the teacher. <laughs> they're, well, uh, the teacher I liked. 
I, I do I, too. I, I, but I, just, I get the feeling you weren't supposed to, but he's... I would. I, I don't know. Like I don't know. Like I want to say, yeah, you're supposed to like him, but because it really never gave us a chan- a, a, a a reason not to. Um, he was. I, they they were kind of playing off the fact that he was somewhat irresponsible. He, so was Peter Venkman. I mean, fair, fair point. I mean, if you think yeah. about it, you can you can more or less attribute the first four Ghostbusters like how they act to a lot of the other characters in this film. That is a fair assessment. They they took they literally took a working a working formula and applied it. Yeah, it's it's a little it's a lot like the first movie, but it's got its oh, amazing mean, it's, differences. It's a working it's a working formula, and they they were smart enough to stick with it. First scene of the movie is literally Egon, Egon. Spangler running. With a trap, but you don't know at the time. You don't know what's in it, but if you know, if you're a Ghostbusters fan, you knew exactly what was fucking in that thing. Running with a trap, and then something he planned failed because of electrical failure, which happens sometimes. Uh, yeah. So it ended up, ends up killing him after he hides the trap. Back to where we're at. Here we got the uh, his daughter going to sign off for his his, uh, his house and stuff, thinking that she's going to make some money off it, and we find out that like he wasn't a part of her life. Not at all. He just walked out on him for some reason. T- typical, typical angry child uh, in that situation, which is understandable. Uh, oh, completely understandable. Although I love that the person she goes to meet there is is freaking Janine. Well, I mean, it would make sense that Janine would be dealing with his his the, all that. That just seems like something Janine would do. It surprised me that she wasn't the mom. A lot of people, I think, was with you, myself included, but. Also, you got to remember, Janine was a little bit of a slut. True, and I'm not, true. I'm not slut shaming. You're not wrong. I mean, she and anyone. Tolly were doing stuff in the Ghostbusters too. So. Yes, she was all over Tolly. She was all over. I that remember, Lou, she was. She liked the Lewis stick, and that was. But I always about. just, you know, growing up, I always just assumed that those two would be a thing. It's because she was a thing in in the animated series. They were. She was always trying. In, in the first and movie, they, she they, was and they went way further with that in the uh, second animated series mm-hmm. too. The fact that the fact that like Spangler knows how to have sex and that's not necessarily a nerd joke that's just like he's so he Spangler so was always the odd that... man out absent-minded only had tunnel vision for science kind of guy and yet he's the one that had a kid they, they get to the house and like you said janine greets them and uh she, you know she even comes in i'm janine melwitz and da, 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 and they talk a little bit and uh, the theater popped when she showed up man <laughs> oh did really oh yeah oh, oh yeah People were just getting so excited. Just to I see was, her. I was excited. Like she walked in, I was like, "Ah!" It's just like, "Yeah, it's Janine, man." Like, How could you not? You know. And then he basically, she basically tells her, "You know, you ain't got. There's no money. You, there's no money in this house." The the, the boy, the, the her son, ends up getting a love interest, and that, that was cool. It almost that, felt like it was. That felt a little forced. Like it didn't need to be there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I didn't mind it. As a concept, but Crushes, the way it was done is just kind of Crushers are cute, and, and it seemed rushed. Yeah, I agree. Like that was my, that's if anything my big my big issue, and he slightly disagrees. But I it was rushed. It was rushed. Slightly. Uh, I think that we could have got to know more characters better, and I think that there should have been a montage of these characters learning the items that they found because it was only like an hour. It's only like an hour ninety or hour fifty nine minute movie. It's like just shy yeah. of two hours. The boy ends up finding like, like literally the third scene in the movie, uh, third or fourth oh. scene in the movie. Pretty he, quickly, pretty quickly. Yeah, pretty quickly. He he ends up. You can tell he's got the crush crush on this chick at this diner, and she's like, I don't know. He's he's officially it's fifteen. Really fast. Yeah, it's and really fast. He's like, he oh up, hey. He ends up applying yeah. to work there, and he's like, yeah, ha ha. And he's like an awkward, goofy kid. Yeah, I um, like him as a character. He, uh, of all the characters, though, he needed the most new development. The, the, the other characters got a lot more focus than he did. Well, yeah, Phoebe got a lot of focus. It's, it kind of felt like he was uh, forgot about. Like, he was just... A lot until, of the Up until the point where he finds the Ecto-1. Yep. And that's yep. where he becomes kind of important, because he starts fixing it. Well, that's another thing. I'd like to know where he learned his skills from. Like, I, I wasn't... I didn't just pop out of high school and... I know, I was like, I know how to fix cars. cars. Exactly. The story continues, and like a little, the first night there after after you know uh, they get back from eating. So uh, Phoebe goes to bed, and like all of a sudden her uh, 
chess set or the chess set next to the bed is tipped over i love and this is so egon like it is it's so egon she puts them all back she puts it all back and i i I don't think it did it that night i think it did it in the morning she woke up in the morning the pawn was moved and uh yep it was beautiful, dude. Like, it, oh, was, it was well done. I immediately picked up on what was going on there, and yeah. I, I just got just a little teary-eyed. Not oh, that not, wasn't the, that was the part where I got teary-eyed. That, oh, no, I, that's not the part where I, like, went nuts. But just, I was, just well, I was just like, oh, oh he's bonding with his teary-eyed. granddaughter. Like, then then you, they go to school, and they meet Gruberman, which, uh, Gary Gruberman. Which Gary they, Gruberman. Which they kind of make fun of the name at one point, uh, who's played by... Uh, Gary Gruberman, uh, oh, Gruberson. Gruberson. Paul Rudd. Uh, Phoebe finds, first finds the, uh, PKE meter, and that leads her to... Some, yeah, she gets some help from, uh, Ghost Egon to yep. help find it. Well, she, she had no problem doing the floor thing. That was no, fucking that cool. Was, that was all her, but, but he, he helped kind he of... He led her to the it. PKE meter. And then, like, he moved the chair and shit. Uh, Phoebe finds the, uh the trap and they take it to school of all places where uh i found a ghost trap yeah. guys i'm taking it to school although in fairness she had no idea what she, it was. they had no idea what it was it was an electrical uh, it was it's a, a weird of... box i found this weird box in my grandfather's uh weird farm it jumps house around and sparks and... yeah the dirt farmer this box? yeah sure take it to school go hey and teacher it... what is this box and everyone referred to egon as the dirt farmer like they did he didn't he f- he moved land, but it never went anywhere. Nothing came out of it. So, it would yep. that he was kind of seen as in, in this this farm town, this small farm town, as like strange. And as you know, if there's something strange in the neighborhood, who are you gonna call? Uh, they bring it. They bring this the box to uh, their teacher Gary, and uh, Gary automatically knows what it is. Like he's, uh, he, but he thinks it's a replica. And we've all seen that com- that one of, on oh, the. Yeah. Uh, on the trailer. That's in the trailer, yeah. Uh, you know, you guys got it. And then, and then some shit happens, like some ghostly shit. Not ghostly like shit. necessarily bad, but just some ghostly shit. Be, uh, and he goes, oh, this isn't, this isn't, this isn't a replica, is it? <laughs> They're like, this is a real thing. Oh, crap. So what do they do? They like hot oh, wire it. it. They want to open it. So they hot wire it to like to, to a truck, to like a fucking, um, to a bus, a school bus. And like they let out what we thought was in there which was this whole time was a demon dog or the devil dog or what are they called i love where it goes i love that it goes to shandor mine yes and well that whole town was built by that, shandor it was it so was. And that that's the fact that we're referencing evil shandor in this movie a lot by the way is really cool yeah the fact that like one of the first things when they've when when the uh phoebe in in podcast which is her friend from school they talked about they were mining that area for metals to go into the building in ghostbusters mm-hmm. one yep, yep remember like, it was a kinetic you? it was a connect is literally a kinetic um uh lightning rod is yep. what they said and, and then the whole town's like why would you mind that yeah well even the phoebe funny, says, if you're a ghostbuster fan you're like i know why because he was obsessed with fucking gozer so we got both devil dogs are i guess supposedly loose now uh-oh. What happens when you have Vince Clortho and Zool out and about? You have a fun chase scene at Walmart. Okay, after a bunch of shit, like the kid fixes the car, the boy kid fixes the car, fucking, um, they actually find, okay, I can't skip this part. They actually find a ghost that looks like, it's like, like evil cousin. it's like Slimer's, like, redneck Not cousin redneck cousin eats everything it, and it, lo- at lo- first i thought it was gonna be slimer i was hoping it no. was gonna be slimer <laughs> slimer because if it had been slimer there are things they could have done with mm-hmm. that but they didn't but that's, well, that's and, and that's okay they introduced their own they kind of found their own yeah. but the, the difference between this one and the original is slimer got his name in the animated series and then after that, they just they ran they rolled with it. They called him Slime. Yeah, I mean he, he was in Ghostbusters too. Yeah, in, in in a role that you would expect him to be in based on a TV series. So yes. there is some continuity there. Yeah. So they had so these these guys had to have their own. Uh, now my one of my small bitches is that like you could have named it something completely different. Coda. 
could have, should have, maybe. But either way, I'm not really mad. They named it Muncher because it eats everything, which makes sense. So, yeah. like, yeah. like, what if they caught it taking a shit? Shitter. Shitter. <laughs> he slimed me. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Slimer, Muncher, and Shitter. Oh. They're cousins. Oh, God. They're brothers. Oh, my God. <sighs> You know, and well, that's the thing. Like, this is what one of my one of the things I'm, I'm confused about is like Slimer. Yeah, he could pick food up and stuff, but when he interacted with like anything, like he went through walls and stuff. This guy was like climbing on shit. Did you notice? Slimer seemed to. I did notice. He floated Sli- too. So I mean, with with Slimer, it seemed like he could interact if he wanted, but not if he wanted. And I think it's the same here. But it's a really strange choice for Muncher to be like, you know what, I could go through this, but I'm in a jungle gym um, because I feel like it. Exactly. I it's, mean, it's not a, it's not necessarily bad. It's not, no. It's, it's interesting, not a, but it's a... It's not a bitch, but it's something that goes through my OCD no mind. why, though. Yeah. You're a goddess. Just go through things. Yeah, I've watched it twice already. Oh, I need to watch it again. Um, I've only seen it the one time in theaters. I, I'm waiting for that home release, man. I'm excited. Oh, yeah, February 1st. Guys, oh, I'm go, go spend it. your money. I'm going to tell you, on this one, it's worth spending your money on. You know, like, in the background, Gary, the, the teacher and the mom, the the kid's mom, is or they're going out. They're, like, kind of... Yep, see, yep. They're kind of seeing each other. And, I mean, they're not... They didn't really keep it too secret from the kids. That, that was kind of... No, cool. it's like, not like a terrible, horrible no, secret or no. anything. So, uh... I actually love the comment from, uh... It's like, oh no, I'm completely grossed out. I oh, just uh, inside, I'm throwing up. It. Yes, I actually really like that. That was a good. Yeah, she, she said something like, uh, "I don't pro, I don't produce emotion like most people do." Well, and I'm gonna go out a little bit on my own, uh, mm-hmm. out myself a little bit here. But as someone who is on the autistic spectrum, I can relate, and I appreciated that. Yeah, and then she's like, "Yeah, on the inside, I'm throwing up," which I thought was hilarious. Was, and oh yeah, the right, well, more, the, more good right, very least. Anything you can you can relate to that. Yeah. It's a relatable character, yeah, cool, and and that's really I what agree. makes it good. Um, and I think that's what made the original Ghostbusters good too. They were also relatable characters. After a chase scene with uh with the the Muncher. ecto the ecto one and Muncher, and you get to see where the, the whole town gets destroyed. Yes, because oh, hey, I don't actually know how to use this thing right yep. away. I know I'm not I'm not sure how how to use a a, a neutron wand and all that other stuff. Yeah, and, and that's why I give it a lot of respect for even where there are things from how did they know how to do that the fact that they did this and they made it integral was really well done yeah and really well set up well if, i'm gonna it, say it, it shows way. that the characters do have to grow even if they don't show us all the things where they grow. but it's a ghostbusters movie it has to have damage oh, of course there has to be proton damage there's there gotta be, to be. No. But it, it, it works really well for both reasons. Yes. Though, yes. You know. Yeah. There's a nice chase scene where they almost they 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 actually catch um, Muncher Muncher in the trap, and that's where mm-hmm. you get the 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 really fast RC car that uh, I love that. that. That was genius. Yeah, with with the with the trap attached to it, that was damn smart. That was really cool. It. They get arrested. <clears throat> which is the part of the game thing I love because yeah. you know, you blow up half the town with a proton pack things are going to happen. Even in- yeah, they got to get bailed out. And it's funny because it happened. All that happened during the date that the mom and Gary were having. Was I the only one that noticed that like, she's telling Gary that she wants Phoebe to get into trouble and be like a regular it's, kid. How typical parent is that? But I don't think she meant like, go get arrested no she meant hey go go uh go piss off an old man or something well this is my question why did the cop handle that equipment so willy-nilly up until one point of course i but, think cop had no idea what he was dealing with is this a backpack yeah. i mean it, it would have been a great line they'd be like what is this what but is this it, and, just, and that again goes was, with what they could have added more but yeah it's okay yeah yeah, um, but I mean, it's not being said because you, there's some body language there when they're carrying. Yeah, they're it, it, like, that you know that said, I say they, I can, I can keep saying they can give Adam more, but I, don't get me wrong, I love the movie. Like, I would love a director's cut of this movie because this movie is great, but there are spots where a little more detail could go a long a way. More, a little more it's a little on the short side, which feels like they were trying to appease the uh, the studio. Uh, and a little bit more time for little bits and pieces really would make this go from a. The, a movie to an A plus. I'm I'm not giving it too much flack, is because it was 
announced. It was announced before COVID. Mm-hmm. It was filmed probably during COVID. <laughs> Almost certainly. Uh, and it was definitely delayed due to COVID. And it was definitely delayed due to COVID because it was supposed to come out in July 2020. We didn't get it till like November 2021. Yeah, well, 20, yeah, yeah, 2021, and and that's that's too bad. I mean, I'm glad we got it. I'm 100. percent Oh yeah, glad it, absolutely. But... That's where the Walmart scene. Comes ah, that's play. the Walmart scene. Thank you. Well, this is oh, what yeah. cracks me up. It looked like a Walmart. Like it totally. It, did. it looks exactly. It, like he, Walmart. he he was in there, and he, I'm like, oh, that looks like. Walmart. I wouldn't be surprised if they shopped uh, if they filmed at an actual Walmart. And it starts off like the, he's he's just shopping, and at one point he gets to you know the aisle where he's shopping probably for ice cream and sort of oh, condiments, like condiments mm-hmm. for stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, what, ha- the marshmallows. what happens to be there is Stay Puft marshmallows, <laughs> and you know like. It's really this. interesting because when I saw this in, because this came, the, this, this, this trailer, part of the trailer came out, what, maybe like three or four, maybe six months before the movie came out. Mm-hmm. And when people saw the Stay Puff little guys walking around, they shat their pants, myself included. <laughs> and I, I was excited to see this scene. Um, it's fucking hilarious. It's amazing. Like, and, it, it, and it has all the energy from the original movie where, you know, of course, I was being chased, chasing uh, down. Well, I was I was gonna get to that uh, with 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 totally being chased down New York, but uh, yeah, the the, the I, I want to focus more right now on that on that Stay Puff scene because that was fucking great. I like, had a lot of fun with it. There's a lot to see. This is all I'm gonna say. There's a lot to see at once. All this, all these things are doing shit, and it's hilarious. And that they're cute as fuck. It starts off cute as fuck, and he's like he like pokes it, and it gets pissed off at him. <laughs> And then it bites his ass, and then that's when shit—that's when he starts noticing something's up here. I should get the fuck out. I should probably just. And there's up. some riding a Roomba, and then he that's finds the he finds you. the terror dog. That's what they're called, terror that's dogs, not devil ter- dogs. Yep. When the terror dog gets he, there, that's he when finds he's just the like, terror dog, uh, and he I'm runs out of food. Walmart. And I shit you not, the scene, the next scene is spot on, just like the original. The terror mm-hmm. dog. Busts out the damn door, skids for about five feet, and then just chases him like like Lewis Tully. There's a scene where the the terror dog's sitting on uh, Gary's car. It's a really awkward scene. And it's hilarious, <laughs> but it's funnily awkward. It's hilariously yes. awkward. The same scene kind of happens with the mom, but uh, oh, Egon. This, this is the one that got me hard. This Egon one hit me. led led uh, his daughter. Just like he led Phoebe, his granddaughter, into like this little basement secret uh, attic, which you get to get in, you got to go down a, a fireman's pole, which is great. Which is I love that. Amazing. I love that a little. That, that's a nice little attention. Well, to what it that. tells me is that Egon had a hard time letting go of his friends. Mm-hmm. We're gonna back up for a minute. While Phoebe was in jail, she had one phone call to make. Or jail. She when she got when they got busted, they had one full call, phone call to make, and she happened to call the number that was on the. Uh, Ghostbusters ad that she saw, off, like you yep. say, YouTube, and uh, yep. So she called that, and it went to raise uh, raise a cult. So he they talk, and she she's asking him like, "Hey, what happened between you guys?" And he basically says that that uh, Egon more or less stole all the equipment and left. Mm-hmm. Uh, didn't say a word, and, and they talked every so often, and and, and Ray even talked about how like. They went from 10 calls a, a week and it went from like whatever to like one call a week if they were lucky. The, well, and we, we ran and... into this between Ghostbusters 1 and 2 as well. It's It seems like the events spike the need. Well, um, they just... And there's there's a guy I was talking to at one point who was just like, y- you can also notice each, you know, between just between Gozer and Vigo, the types of ghosts and the way the ghosts behave are different. Yeah. So they might yeah. even just have their own little hosts, as yeah. it were. Or yeah, or come from a different ghost world, depending on how you want to look at it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say it is or isn't. I'm just saying yeah. that's an interesting this, thought. These are our thoughts on this. It's not, you know, it's it, not it, it's canon. Not it's sad, but it's, it's an interesting idea. Ray more or less explained all the problem. When when Phoebe mentions Egon's name, what do you want? Like, he says something along the lines of, like, what about that son of a bitch? Like, he was mad. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. I, I want to. What I want to point out here is, I want to say that that I want to say it was meant to represent the real life argument between Hale Bill Ramis. Murray I, and Hale Ramis. I, I kind of felt those vibes. Like, I felt like that was the inspiration too. Like the moment that they mentioned him dying, did you see that 
like how he, he reacted. He immediately went, wait, what? Like, oh, shit. But anyway, we're going to go back to the board where, uh, where Egon is literally leading his daughter uh, to that little underground bunker kind of thing. And what, one of the funniest things is he moves the lamps and it looks like... And I, I, the, the thing is, I don't know if I'm the only one, but I could imagine Egon next to her. I, I, I see the Egon there and I see him literally... Like, I could in my mind's eye, I could mm-hmm. see him how he's doing it. I, I, but I saw the same thing. Without doing that, if you look at it, it looks like the lamp is, like, alive. It's a Pixar lamp. It's a Pixar lamp. It's moving around. But what he's doing is he's lighting shit up so it'll get their attention. And he does mm-hmm. it for her. There's a picture of her as a little girl. And then there's a oh, wall of mm-hmm. nothing but her. She thought that her dad didn't care about that her. one. And uh, that didn't get me a little teary eyed. That got me bawling. I wasn't bawling, but I was like, at that point, I was it like, oh, this is, this is kind of, this is nice. And, uh, and, and, but that's the part right when the fucking terror dog takes yeah. her. And I always like to think, imagine what Egon was doing. Like when he was, wa- he watched his daughter get possessed. Oh, God. Oh. It's like the being dead in phasmophobia and watching your friends. Yeah, going. and I would love to know. I would love to know what he was saying. I wish there was a scene, one of the funniest parts of the movie. It's going, and they see their mom, like, breathing heavy and acting like acting like Zool. They're talking, and I think everyone's mom, my mom did this when I was younger. There is no mom, only Zool. <laughs> so hearing that made me bust up. <laughs> oh, my mom never did that, but I could have seen her do it. Yeah, my I, I would you know because when you call your mom when you're a kid, mom, mom, and she would answer me, there is no mom, only Zool. So when I heard that, I about shat myself laughing because <laughs> memories. The, the the podcast goes in like, are you okay, Mrs. Whatever? And she's like, are you the key man? And like reaches and gropes his head, and I'm like, no. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's, it's in character. It's Zool. It's Zool. Zool I get know. it. It's in character. But no! <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's very... It's cringy! Uh, but I like it because it fits. Oh, that's what they found out. They found out that Egon had like a little setup in Shandor oh, Mine. This. this was great. With like all of the... Uh, well, proton four, packs. four, and four the, or five... Pro, three proton packs. Three, I believe. And this is why all the earthquakes were happening. And, and there's a whole a whole story for the... I suggest you watch it for that. You um, should watch it. This is the sort of thing why we're not going to go into... Yeah. Yeah. So yeah there's but, a lot going on. Everything kind of like fits into place. That's about the time where the, mo- where the mom, the possessed mother, the, the gatekeeper yep. ends up taken off to uh, Chandler Mine. The transformation happens. The gatekeeper, the key master... Do their thing. Do their thing. As, they, as they, they do. do. They, do they do the mask. That's how it works. The sex happens. And uh, boom, Gozer. And it looks just like Gozer oh, from they, the first they, movie. They, they did amazing. With, with an exactly exception, like- with, a, with, a, with a, like a better body. Like, I'm not saying like sexy. I'm talking like, like it looks like a shell with, with, with crystals, almost. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. It's the outfit really nice. is a little bit better. It was, it's not just a bubble suit like the first one. Yeah. Well, I think this is what they wanted originally. They just couldn't do it. Yeah, it is. You know. Yeah. Um, and and of course, there's a little CG there. There's like lightning you can see through. You can see, she's almost trans translucent, like through her body. Right I there. love the discussion that is had there. Oh, you talking about? Phoebe. Oh, are you talking about the jokes? <laughs> yes. Yeah, her jokes are great. She's telling these horrible. She just walks up like, um, excuse me, and it reminds me of the first scene of Ghostbusters it's, when they're trying to talk yes. to Eleanor Twitty. <laughs> I love this. It's Excuse me. Yeah, it, it, but she instead she just tells these really bad jokes. Awkward but they're jokes. so bad, they're good. They end up they she ends up distracting her. They end up catching the gatekeeper, and her mom comes back, which is fine. Like Gozer is half a Gozer. Yep. Like you just see spirits, a spirit like a spirit, and like like almost a skeletal form that that phases in and out of existence. Well, and we also get something else around this time. Hmm. Medieval Shandor. Oh, God, yes, I did not mention (laughs) Shandor. See, that's how forgettable he was. While they were at Shandor Mine, Shandor was like in like a a glass coffin. Like like he's Snow White or some shit. And like he's in a coffin. And he's just laying there. And he doesn't look like he's been dead, what, like 70 years or something? Yeah, but he looks like he died maybe two days ago. Gozer is like brought back he wakes right the fuck up and like he's like oh god gozer i'm so glad he's fanboying over this is how quick 
This is how quick you see him. He's there he's one there, minute. And he's then he, then two people. One of them, and then there's two of them. Yes. I do like that that's what Gozer did, but it it's a little too rushed. It that was, is rough. I would have liked to have known like more from Evo Shandor. Why is Evo Shandor like obsessed with Gozer? What is I would the love story? That. Yeah. Well, they, they, in, in the original, they make it clear he, he's kind of a... Uh, he's a cultist. He's kind of nuts. And he's nuts, yes. be a reason why There's a that reason that yeah. happened, and I'm, I want to know why. I want to know, why did you devote your shit to the point where, like, you gave Gozer two chances to resurrect? All that happens, they get back to the barn, and they're trying to get Gozer into the, the dirt trap, and just when you think shit is done, that... that like, they lost the proton packets on the ground. Stay Puff Marshmallow Mint munching and eating shit inside the Ecto-1. Oh, God. And, and, and Gozer's... I'm... Well, no, she broke the, what's it called, the, the trap. And yep. then here comes here comes the gatekeeper again. But in this time, possesses the young lady that the young the young man is interested in. So uh, so that brought, brought Gozer back to full form. And it, right when you're starting to think, oh, God, this is the end. She's walking towards him like this is it. You hear Peter Vickman's voice. This got the loudest pop out of my theater. Oh my god! Everyone was just so excited from this. And all three of them, they're all there. Vinkman, Zedmore, uh, Stance, right there. Right there. And of course, Stance had to make. Of course, Ray had to make a fucking speech. Did you see the look on on Peter and Zedmore's face? <laughs> yes. When was when he great. was doing that, and he was, you know, like in the first movie, he was like in the the the, the, the he said like the, the state, the city, and the, the county of New York. We but he was like he was like like talking like Dunkin' Donuts and shit in this one. Like Peter kept like just making like I know you're back because you want me jokes. Oh and god, was, it was it was beautiful. It's so on brand for Peter it was Bank. so on, ba- so brand, on for brand. Peter Bank, I love it. After some really great. good shit, they try and cross the streams, and th- th- this I always thought was kind of weird. In this one especially, you'll notice that so the ghosts can grab the beams and move them. That was pretty weird. I always thought that was strange. Like, and she does it. Like Gozer does it at one point. I don't mind that Go- Gozer's a god. Yeah, so I'm that. a little more but okay with Muncher that. doing it. Was kind Muncher of fucking weird. Muncher should not be able to do that. Like, I get maybe being able to phase out of it, like they've done in, in other in the game and yeah. in, in the movies. But like being able to just pull it apart and yeah, get it, it just it doesn't mm-hmm. seem right. It just doesn't rub me the right. I'm with you there. I'm with you. Um. But then, so she uncrosses the streams, and even even Ray's like, she's uncrossing the streams. <laughs> like he's surprised. It's a great moment. You're like, oh no. Yes. And by the way, I'm surprised they did that because I mean, I'm I I am, but I'm not because that's the way they get rid of her in general. Uh, and it worked the first time, but but it's just weird that they would want to do that again, considering it killed them. I think it was, well, this worked last time. Let's do it again. Yeah. Gozer's walking in on them like it's their imminent. You get a, she gets shot in the side of the head by uh, Phoebe, mm-hmm. who's sitting there. And there's this, like, I, I can only attribute this to, like, the DBZ scene from with Kid Gohan and fucking Cell. Because yeah. you have I mean, you have her shooting the lightning. She's doing the, the force lightning and... She, and, mm-hmm. and uh, Phoebe's doing the the proton pack, and it's like stuck in the middle. And somewhere down the line, you see a hand guiding her. God, it's so well done. Mm. Like I'm getting it, a little teary eyed now. Be honest, I'm getting a little teary eyed um, too. Right. I was happy. Like yeah, oh yeah, it's a beautiful moment. Um, and it's oh, it's just it it's of course it's fucking Egon, right? Yeah, it's oh, Egon yeah. guiding her. So like the others join in. And it, and it zooms out to, like, they're all side by side. Well, guess yep. who's standing there right next to Phoebe looking at them like he's still part <laughs> of the team. And he is. He is. Never gone. He's gone. And, they, and it's funny because I liked it. They looked over at him and, like, Winston, and I think, like, was the first. And, yep. And one of the one of the best lines was um, was uh, Venkman talking to uh, Egon. He says, I knew you were going to show up at one point or something along those lines. He does say that. That's great. And, uh, like, they end up, so, long, long story short, they end up catching Gozer. Like, they, 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 with all those she traps, gets, yep. she gets in all those, they put her in all those traps. 
and whatever else the 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 terror dogs and all those other things they're they're all taken like of course it's the terror dogs as soon as soon as gozer's gone they turn into like, like a charcoal version of yeah you know or they got to break out like in the first movie the young man uh podcast who was fighting off Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. That was great. And at the end, at that part, he's just head to toe. He looked just like fucking Ray did at the yeah. end of Ghostbusters, covered head to toe in nothing but like Stay Puff Marshmallow. And I love that after all this, Egon gets some farewells in. Yes. And they even they don't just limit it to Phoebe either. They they get e- even the the, the grandson mm-hmm. also. The grandson. Gets in. They all. I want to hit me because I'm like he he wasn't. They didn't feature him as much as Phoebe, which is fine. It's not a problem. No, it would have been nice. It's nice. To see more. It was nice that they recognize. Yeah, no, it's still his grandfather too. And he, you know, well, he walked up. Egon nice. walks up to him, and he there. And of course, they're all wearing all of Egon's old like like jumpsuits yeah. and yep. I, how they fit all those kids. I don't know, but they, whatever he, movie magic. So Egon walks up to his grandson and he just like tugs on his collar. Like you look good. It. Like you look I good. I love it. And he did. He looked good. He does. He does. Um, but the sad, the, the, the sad and happy part was when he goes to his daughter. Mm-hmm. And what you find out uh, throughout all this is that everything he gave up was to keep Gozer from coming back. Mm-hmm. Like uh, his friends, he gave up his friends, he gave up his family. He didn't just abandon them. And so there, it ends It ends with those two, with, with uh, father and daughter, with a hug. Just at that point, this, the uh, camera pans up and it says, for Harold. Oh, God. Now I'm tearing up for real. It does. Like, yeah. This was a love letter to Harold Ramis and Egon Sprangler. And it showed, I'm not going to say it showed... Um, a new generation of Ghostbusters, but it's showing that Ghostbusters can live on. It's not showing that it has to be rebooted. It's not showing that it it, it no, needs. You, it, you can continue you could absolutely, this and make well, it work. What I personally love, you can continue. You don't have to get the original characters, although please do. But this is a fitting send off to the original cast. Oh yeah, the Ghostbusters script for Ghostbusters Three has gone through so much shit. That we we ended up getting 2016. <laughs> um, we and that that right there is just a good example of when you rush something without love. A yep. good example of when you put love into something is what we just saw. They make a big deal about Winston being a good businessman. He's he's done mm-hmm. well for himself, and in that uh, one of the post credit sequence, you see him. Getting the firehouse back. Oh yeah, that's and the last he's scene. Starting, he's maybe he's starting something up. Well, I also like the other cutscene where uh, Sigourney comes back. Yeah, as Dana, and she's she she's shocking Venkman. <laughs> this is amazing. And, and with the with you know doing the cards from the, the first card trick from the first movie, and that was very very well done. But the uh, takeaway from all this is that uh, this is how you do it right. Like I'm yeah, I like agree. a nine out of ten in my opinion. like if yeah it, it, and. If this is if this is the first one you go see, it's gonna be a little weird, but it's still good. Yeah. Only thing I have uh, is I would have loved to have seen Louis Tolley back. Um, uh, Rick Moranis. I would have loved to have seen him reprise like a second, uh, just a second of him doing something in in this. But you know what? I get it. It's okay. Like Rick Moranis is is a fucking amazing actor. So uh, in the end, he's retired. All right, guys, with that, we'll go ahead and end the podcast. We thank you for watching. We thank you for listening. We'll see you next time. Until then, stay nerdy. Stay sexy. Always.